Okay, welcome back to the next part of the 3 inch race quad build series. This time around we're going to be featuring the ESC. Now the ESC I've chosen for this is the Racer Star 20 amp all in one ESC. Now I purchased this off Banggood when it was on crazy sale and I paid $28 delivered to the door. Now let's have a quick look at how much this ESC weighs. Okay, complete with all the wiring, it weighs 23.8 grams. Now, this wiring is of a very, very large gauge, so I'm not quite sure what type of quadcopter you'd be using this. I mean, realistically, this would go for most things with a, like a, a big 6-inch prop with a 2208, that'd be fine. But realistically, all these cables, most people are going to desolder those and, and solder the cables directly to it. So... What do you get when you get your ESC? So the first thing you notice is you get yourself a 20 amp times 4 ESC. Now there is some kind of voltage output on the back. We do have some kind of looks like a linear um, back on the back. We won't be using the inbuilt uh, 5 volt from this. We'll be taking the 5 volt uh, for all our control uh, from the all air one flight control. So we won't be using that in our build, but it is there if you do want to. Uh, the next thing you are going to notice is when you actually pick the thing up, all these little motors are actually uh, numbered, but I'm not quite sure, maybe this was an old CC3D um, way they did the motoring uh, numbering, but these numbers don't match up with clean flight or better flight. So when you are um, doing your cabling, you're going to have to be very, very... Uh, yeah, you're basically really going to have to watch what you're doing to make sure that each number corresponds to where it is on the craft and you, you're going to have to ignore motor 1, motor 2, motor 3, motor 4 you just have to make sure it's, it's directing it to the right place now what comes with the kit basically you get yourself your ESC and you get a tiny little cable now unfortunately this tiny little cable doesn't work for my application I have to use the other cable that came with the quad Okay, here's the other cable that comes with the kit. So this is the one we might end up using because the little cable here doesn't plug in to the port that I need to use on my flight control. Okay, a couple of things you're probably going to notice is I've already gone ahead and done a rough dry assembly uh, on this. Is I've already gone ahead and trimmed some of the heat shrink uh, back because it was actually overlapping over the holes next thing you're going to need to be very very careful of when you are using this flight control is if you're using hexagonal standoffs as you're turning the hexagonal standoffs it's actually hitting some little surface mount components so realistically it's probably not a good idea if you're using hexagonal standoffs or you might have to just shave the hexagons off the bottom section or you might actually knock off the SMDs and damage the board so just be very very careful it is exactly the same on all four um, if you place them in one spot and then screw from underneath it's going to work absolutely perfectly but if you plan on having to turn this section like I'm planning on having to do you're going to have to do a little bit of modifications there so that's one thing that you're going to have to be wary of okay next step for me is I'm going to go ahead and remove all the wiring and then we're going to go ahead and check the actual weights that it's going to be in the craft Okay, so we've gone ahead and desoldered all the connectors off our ESC. I must say, it's probably one of the very easiest desoldering jobs I've ever done. Basically, the cables leapt off this sucker. The only one that was a little bit different is the earth, and basically there's a some kind of something just right in behind that it's directly soldered to, so that needed a little bit more heat than the rest of them. Apart from that, it was all good. All right, so we're coming in at a total of 8.7 grams. Now that's pretty darn light for an all-in-one ESC, so I definitely think going this way for such a small build is a much better option than going with the little uh, ESCs, uh, the separate ESCs. The only problem with that is if we do burn out one ESC, you basically got to chuck the whole thing in the bin, so there's going to be no saving it. So I've never burnt out an ESC yet, whether I've just been lucky, uh, I don't know, but we're about to find out. 
All right, let's go ahead and finally get to actually building this quad. Now, what are you gonna to need to go ahead and install it? The way I have done it is I have countersunk the holes in the bottom of the frame. That way, when I go ahead and put the, the screws in there, the battery is actually gonna sit a little bit flatter. You're going to need your battery cable, your ESC, you're going to need four screws. Now I'm using nylon. I do understand that there is more chance of stripping, but the whole idea is I want to build this crazy, crazy light. Now I'm using countersunk white nylon. White, black doesn't really make a difference. And the thread I'm using is eight millimeters long. Next thing you're going to need is four nuts. Again, I've just got black ones here for the moment. Now these are two and a half mil thick. The next thing you're going to need is some standoffs. Now I've gone ahead and joined them all together and then basically just gone over the outsides with a file just to knock the points off the corners so that way it doesn't damage the little surface mount components as you're going to install it. It's easier doing it this way. Now these are six millimeters long. You can use eight, you can use 10, whatever you've got, but I'm gonna try and keep this profile nice and low so six mil should be good and it should also still give the EC enough room to breathe and keep cool. All right, let's actually go ahead and assemble this. Okay, the very first job we're gonna do is thread the Velcro through the frame. It's gonna be a lot easier doing this now than it is at a later stage. Turn the frame upside down. Go ahead and drop your four screws in place. Now you notice I haven't countersunk them all the way. That's basically because I didn't want to make the frame too thin, but I just wanted them to sit a lot closer. I probably will put a small piece of tape or a small piece of foam in there just to protect from any impact on the battery, which will cover those heads up. But I just wanted to get them as close as physically possible. No, oh, that was a silly thing to do. Okay, so don't do what I did. Do one at a time. It's much easier. Okay, let's so. Trusty Tamiya box key. I must have had that box key since I was probably three when I got my very first Tamiya Grasshopper, which I still have. So it's definitely been around for a few years. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the orientation. Now, I've already mentioned that the motor numbers don't really correspond to better flight or clean flight. We're gonna be using better flight for this build. So it doesn't really matter in which, you know, it doesn't matter if that corner's one or four because it, it doesn't matter anyway. So for me, all I really care about is the direction that I want the, the flight control to sit. And I've decided that I want the flight control to be sitting with the USB port to the side and I want the arrow to be facing forward. Now it just happens that it actually lines up very very nicely for me that the uh, voltage connection pads on the flight control and the voltage connection pads on the ESC are here and then the two connections for the ESC are actually going to be over top of each other. So that has actually worked out brilliantly for me on this particular build. So we're going to be facing this this way in the quad. So for me, uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, motor three here, motor two here, motor one here, and motor four, but that makes absolutely no difference in clean flight, so. Okay, now we've got that decision made. You'll see that it is very, very tight underneath. It is basically resting on that piece of Velcro, but we've got just enough there to go ahead and tighten this thing down. Alright, so the next part of the build is basically just actually finally nutting this little ESC down and all we're going to use is our little nylon standoffs that we've rounded off just slightly and these ones are 6mm tall and they don't really need to be much more than finger tight because you do them any more than finger tight they're just going to strip anyway. Okay, so now we can start to see this starting to take shape. Now we go ahead and drop our flight control down. And you 
can see we're now going to stack another set of these standoffs and then we're going to end up with the camera sitting on top of the whole shooting match. Probably getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. The next part of the build is going to be installing the motors. Let's see how that is. Tune in for the next part of the build.